So how much have you considered the possibility of a simulation? Well, a lot. I mean, I, I developed the simulation argument yes. uh, back in the early 2000s. And so, uh, yeah. So, so where, where, where has this pursuit taken you? Oh my God. Where have you landed? Why would you ask that? I'm asking that here and now. It's New York City, it's March 7th. Well, partly it's taken to these very strange images that are behind your head right now. These are pictures of equations. I've been, for the last 15 years, trying to answer the kinds of questions that my colleagues here have been raising. And what I've come to understand is that there are these incredible pictures that contain all the information of a set of equations that are related to string theory. And it's even more bizarre than that because when you then try to understand these pictures, you find out that buried in them are computer codes just like the type that you find in a browser when you go surf the web. And so I'm left with the puzzle of trying to figure out whether I live in the matrix or not. <laughs> Wait, you're blowing my mind at this moment. So you're saying, are you saying your attempt to understand the fundamental operations of nature leads you to a set of equations that are indistinguishable from the equations that drive search engines and browsers on yeah, our computers. That is correct. So, wait, wait, I'm still, wait, I have to just be silent for a minute here. <laughs> so you're saying as you dig deeper, you find computer code writ in the fabric of the cosmos. Into the equations that we want to use to describe the cosmos, yes. Computer code. Computer code, strings of bits of ones and zeros. It's not just sort of resembles computer code, you're saying it is computer code. It's not even just is computer code, it's a special kind of computer code that was invented by a scientist named Claude Shannon in the 1940s. That's what we find very, very deeply inside the equations that occur in string theory and in general in systems that we can call, say are supersymmetric. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Time to go home, I think. I mean, I, where are we going to go? Ahead? So, so um, are you saying we are all just, there's some entity that programmed the universe and we're just expressions of their code? Well, I didn't say that. But some of those like codes, the Matrix? Do you, that's of, what you said. Some of those codes are, are showing on the screen behind you right now. They don't look like codes, but these pictures, which we call adinkras, are graphical representations of sets of equations that are based on codes. So this is, in fact, to answer your question more directly, I have, in my life, come to a very strange place because I never expected that the movie The Matrix might be an accurate representation <laughs> of the place in which I live. Jim, may, 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 may I give you an argument that we don't live in The Matrix? Oh